So this little mini video is for fun and it's just to run through the history of my test case manager going all the way back actually to 1996. So that's 25 years, 1996 to 2021. And the evolution as it's leaned out, thinned it out over time to less and less and less until now it's just the minimum necessary that you need. Started off in an Access 95 database and then moved an Access 97 database. So this is the oldest thing I could find for test case manager. It's from 1996 and it's documentation of an Access database. It's in Access 95. I have a screenshot in a Word document. And look at that, the Word document from 1996 opens up fine. <laughs> anyway, this screenshot shows you what's going on. It was a simple tool. I don't even know what the logging button did, but there's a pass button, a fail button, and I don't even remember what the button there does. And that's the only screenshot I have, so I think this was it. I think you just move through the records down here at the bottom for your test cases and you had no logical grouping, no tree structure, no no nothing. It was just, <laughs> there's your test cases, some notes, and that's it. So really a simple tool. And that was the first instance, 1996. Moving along to version number two in 1999, I started my first freeware hobby site, Chris Business Systems, and I retired it in 2003. So this is two, test case manager version 2.11, I'm gonna show here in a minute. It was last deployed October 3rd of 2000. And that version was pretty extensive. You're gonna see all the different screenshots and all the different forms and all the different reports and all the different user definable fields. And it even supported multiple languages complete with a language translation file builder. All that stuff was built in here. And uh, I'll show you with Wayback Machine. We'll go look at those screenshots. But the bottom line, was it like most test case management systems of today, the overhead's just too heavy and you can never achieve flow state. I talk about that in the overview video where you're just really efficient and just banging out test cases and concentrating and focused and there's no distractions. When you have all this extra overhead and all these other fields and columns, it, it just slows you down. Sometimes it's necessary, but when you, when you don't need it, it's nice not to have it. So this uh, version 2.11 was also Microsoft Access version 2000, I think, and it had many knocks against it. Uh, it access does, that is that it's not a server based, it's client server, it's not a true data base, it's files based, etc. Anyway, we'll look at that next. So next we're going to go find the oldest instance of the second version of test case manager. There's a whole bunch of builds of it. So it's version 2.11 is the furthest along that went. And it was in Pierce Business Systems. And I don't have, I might have it on a CD somewhere. But so anyway, the simplest way to do that is go to the Wayback Machine. So archive.org slash web, pretty neat. And so you can go way back in time. So I'm gonna go to this one, tvsys.com. That's my old website. So let's hit enter. And this will take us to this graph. I could go to the very first instance of when it was saved way back then, but I don't want that. I want right in, let's, check this block of time in 2004 and oh we'll pick uh I'm not sure june 14th and we'll pick that time 7 20 p.m and we'll click it and so the wayback machine yep there's my old website at that point in time so i'm going to drop down into test case manager in this tool here's the screenshots of what's going on the test case explorer it was in access, a lot of buttons. You had your tree control over here for your test areas, your areas under test of the application. You had all your test cases listed out here. You could scroll down through them. Uh, you could, if you wanted to execute them at this level, you could pass and fail by title to go a bit faster. You didn't have to though. You could go in, there was a form view. One of these buttons would go down to form view. Anyway, there's a lot going on on this screen. Adding areas, adding test cases, editing, areas, editing test cases, etc. And uh, anyway, that's the entry the language button. If I go back, let's see, click that. That was a test case explorer. Here's a test case detail when you're in the details. And yeah, there's your passes and fails and saving results and user defined functions. I mean, this tool, it looks ugly, but it's 25 years old, but it did a lot. You had notes and you could clear or click default to stamp a template. Just a lot going on, a bunch of fields, etc. Let's close that and go back. Uh, there's a properties wizard. When you're setting it all up, nine different steps of properties and user defined fields and all kinds of stuff. Too busy. The report wizard, a bunch of different reports. And you would walk through the wizard 
and you would view reports like, well, we'll get to the reports in a minute. Uh, pick language, I only had Dutch. Anyway, so there's even a function for that, create a new dictionary file, did all that stuff, ugh, too much. And then what is this one? Oh, there you go. That's the form to edit the language. And so this form, you would go through the 23 controls in that form. And then you would go, anyway, holy smokes, through the different objects. And like, this is a freeware project. If someone wanted to translate that, they would translate it. Uh, 23 objects times four. Anyway, just way too much. It's fun to do to try and make a multilingual application. But there you go. That was done. Now, the reports, pretty involved. You have your test cases by counts, a bunch of stuff going on there. You had your test case summary report with the test cases and did it pass, did it fail, who did it, what was the build, blah, blah, blah. And the military index 01, 01.01, .01, which is correlates to your tree back when we, on the left side of the report. And then sample test cases, what is that? Detail report, oh, that's all the details if you want a giant report. Anyway, way too much detail. Ugh. Neat, but overkill. And ugly by today's standards, and nobody does client server anymore. Everyone wants a web based app, so not, not any good at all compared to today's standards. Moving along to version 3.x in 2009, I worked at a large aerospace company and with two functional analysts who were experts in the field, and they came from the telecommunications area, and they were using a spreadsheet to track test cases. And I used their spreadsheet, and I liked it. I liked the approach. And so a couple of years later, when I started my second freeware hobby site, windtestgear.com, which is also retired, just like Pierce Business Systems was. Anyway, I took the good parts of TCM from up here, the Access Complicated Test Case Manager, and thinned out and made a spreadsheet with some of the functionality, but not all of it. And uh, I also made a, that uh, doesn't matter, different spreadsheet. But TCM Lite was the name of that spreadsheet-based test case manager. And I'm going to show you that in the Wayback Machine next. So for TCM Lite on WinTest Gear from 2009, let's go to the Wayback Machine again. March 23rd and 5.41 a.m. Yep, that's the site, WinTest Gear. File touch, data mask, schema diff. This was under templates, I bet. It was. And so there's TCM Lite. Here was an example or a sample uh, project with TCM Lite. There's too much going on. There's a snapshot, a trend. That's the current test cycle snapshot. Here's the past test cycle trend report. And I was tracking different things. Test case count, failed test case count, total test time. And this is the actual test case entry screen. It's too busy, uh, too many columns. Sure, it's nice to have the execution steps, the expected results separated, and any comments, usually blank, but not always. And then I tacked on the time and who the tester was and the date tested. I wanted to lean things out even more and get rid of columns and thin it out and just simplify it. And that's what we have with my test case manager. So anyway, this one was okay, but it could be lighter, and now it is. So the first three versions I publicly released, the fourth version I never did, just over the next 10 years from 2009 to 2020-ish, I occasionally modified and used different incarnations of TCM Lite for my day job. In 2013 in particular at an insurance company, I used it really heavily and it worked out really well. Just an internal group, the three other developers, one systems analyst, and two testers, myself and one other. And the little projects that I would get during the sprints, I would just use a version of TCM Lite to track it. It worked out really well. Um, I used it heavily. I also used it in 2019 at a different company on a two-month project that had a lot of churn and it was really handy to be able to track that churn and show what was going on build to build. There's a lot of test cycles in that project. I did find this Excel template that I was using for exploratory testing and I was using it pretty heavily in 2013. This is where I added the section up here to track my counts and know how long each of these were taken. And what I would do, it was called temp, but I would just do like sprint one, uh, test cycle one, sprint one, test cycle two. And if I did two or three test cycles within a two week sprint, I could track all that, had my nice metrics, could communicate what was going on, how many cases I was regressing or not regressing, et cetera. So this tool worked pretty good and it's, it's got a lot of what the current 
test case template has. It has this graph and it has the three columns that really all the testing boils down to. And so it's pretty close predecessor to what is there today. This is pretty close to the current one and that's 2013. So there we go, that's the evolution. And finally version five here in early 2021, I started my third hobby site, which you're looking at now, I'm watching the video from. And uh, this time it's not. And finally version five here in early 2021, I started my third hobby site. And finally version 5.x, the current 2021 April version of uh, my test case manager looks pretty close to the version 4.0. It uh, has your test cases, yellow text means you can edit it. Got the little graph up here and then all the different uh, test run information down here, reports over here, etc. So that is the evolution of my test case manager. Thanks for watching and hey, thanks for using the tool too. And if you have any suggestions, shoot them to me. Uh, you can hook up through YouTube or in GitHub. Either way, you can contact me and send me suggestions to improve it.